Hey, race fans. All right, it's our annual Christmas giveaway. Not a giveaway. It's our annual Christmas gift selection idea show. Uh, a lot of books to choose from for race fans who are starved for a little racing action. And we're going to start with Dale Earnhardt Jr. My buddy Ryan McGee of ESPN sat down with Dale Jr. and they talked about how his career came to an end with his head injuries and his concussion issues. And, you know, if you don't know Dale Earnhardt Jr., I don't know him very well, but you have to like the guy because he's always been so honest. And it really comes through in this book. The guy is, uh, he just lays it all out and what he was going through and Ryan got a lot of good quotes and put it all together and it's really an interesting read about a guy that had everything and appreciated everything uh, probably as humble a guy as you'll ever want to meet he's done a really good job on NBC Sports on television he's coming to the Indy 500 next year and uh, we got some surprises for you folks but right now Dale Earnhardt Jr. is racing to the finish it's just basically the last few years of his career and how it, how everything was kind of set in motion. Then he became a husband. Then he became a dad, and uh, it's very reasonably priced too. All right. In 1955, Gentlemen, Start Your Engines was one of the, the first racing book I ever bought. But I probably was not until 1960 because I couldn't read. Uh, and Wilbur Shaw wrote it. Well, this is called Gentlemen, Start Your Engines. Is the rest of the story. Our buddy Bob Gates has written some great books about Jim Herdebees and Troy Rutman, Parnelli people through the years took on this project, Bill, Sh Bill Shaw, Wilbur's son. Uh, they added some chapters after Wilbur's unfortunate passing in an airplane accident. And what you don't know about Wilbur Shaw, I mean, I'm a student of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, supposedly, or I thought I was. I had no idea what a badass Wilbur Shaw was in every way. Built his own cars, built his own engines, towed them all over the place, was a hell of a race driver. But this story about how he got started in racing just tells you how it, it makes you go okay that's why get, people get hooked on racing really a cool story and Bob Gates did a good job of kind of tying the the past with the present so uh, this is a really good book too and then the guy I have lunch with every Friday Bones Bossier wrote a book called Hot Shoe I don't know if you've ever heard of Gary Ballou he's about 71 years old now but if you were if you were around modified racing in the 70s and 80s and the, the beginning of uh, and stock car racing also Gary Ballou was the hottest guy on four wheels, and his career was about to be paved in gold because he was going to be a star in NASCAR. Unfortunately, he got hooked up with some bad people and started smuggling marijuana. And then he got caught and he went to jail twice. And that was the end of his, his NASCAR career, never took off. And his racing career was pretty much stymied, uh, other than the four years I think his appeal was being heard. But again, what's refreshing about the Dale Earnhardt Jr. book and this hot shoe book about Gary Ballou, Bones' book, is how honest everybody is. And it's, it's always rare, and, and not just racing books, any sports books, it's always, you know, sugar-coated. It was, this was great, this was great. Ballou's really good. He's like, I don't know anybody in an apology because I served my time. If anybody, you know, but it's, he, he pretty much realized what happened to him and, and, and is very honest and about pointing out all his shortcomings. And, uh, again, this is, uh, this is kind of a cool book just because you saw what this guy had, and he was magic. I mean, the guy was just amazing in four wheels in a stock car and a modified, and he was going to be a star in NASCAR, and it never materialized. So, last but not least, I grouped these together. The fourth book, Modern Thunder. This is the history of the United States Auto Club from 1981 to 2017, put together by Pat Sullivan, Dave Argerbright, and John Mahoney. Patrick and Dave used their writing skills to write the chapters, and they used all of John Mahoney's great photos. He's been shooting pictures for 65 years. Guys, Mahoney's, he looks good for 90. Mahoney is, he's done really well. But this has got all kinds of great pictures and stats. And if you're a fan of USAC sprint car racing, or sprint car racing in general, this is a must-have just because it's, it's, it's a history book. And the other thing that's really cool in the back of it, they took 1956 to, to, to 1980, and they put all the, you know, all the great, the Johnny Thompsons and the Don Brantons and Elmer George and all the guys, Larry Dixon and, and, uh, and J.R. when he won and McCluskey and Parnelli. And, you know, that was the hair, that was the, the quick way to the Indy 500 was to show your medal in a sprint car back in the 50s and 60s. So uh, this is just a great book. And, and you can get Modern Thunder, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s story, Gary Ballou's story, and the Wilbur Shaw book. At Coastal181.com, best clearing house in the United States for racing books. Coastal181.com. So all four of those are available right there. 
Now we got to my buddy Gordon Kirby, who keeps cranking out these great little books every year. Wally Dombeck's his latest. Now, some of you younger fans might not know who Wally Dombeck was. Pretty damn good race driver. But he was probably, without a doubt, the best chief steward IndyCar racing's ever had. Probably one of the best chief stewards racing's ever had. And the reason was because he was so honest, so fair, no ego, didn't play favorites, looked at the rule book, made his calls, looked at a crash, made his judgment since he based it on his experience. And Wally, I think sometimes when I wrote for the Indianapolis Star, I, I got on him a couple times and I'm thinking, what was I thinking about? You know, this guy's the best thing that we ever had. And sometimes you just, I don't know, I apologize because I was an idiot for writing a couple of those things because Wally, he was the guy that always, without a doubt, went right down. He, he looked at the rule book and he, and he made his decisions. Cost him a couple of really good friendships because he made a call that didn't go the way that his buddies thought it should. So, uh, Wally's still, he's still kicking in Basalt, Colorado. Him and Peppy is his lovely wife. And uh, we had lunch the other day and he was really pleased with this book because it just, it's, his, it's his whole life. But here's a guy that was instrumental in getting the safety team formed and just really, when CART was in its heyday, Wally was one of the reasons. So this is it. This is just a great book. It's a race. It's at racemakerpress.com. Sorry, racemaker.com, and uh, it's there's lots of Gordon Kirby's books there, but this is the latest one on Wally. All right, the best Christmas present you can buy is this book right here by Sylvia Wilkins called Fifty Fifty. It's John Paul Jr.'s story. If you know anything about open wheel racing, you've heard the name John Paul Jr. In the early '80s, he was going to be the next great thing. Beat Rick Mears at Michigan, I think the first time he ever ran there in a 500 mile race. Had almost beat Mario Andretti in the parking lot at Caesars Palace. Uh, just got rave reviews from her, from Mario to Bobby Unser. This guy is the greatest. He is, it's unbelievable he's just a kid. He went from watching the Indy 500 in the infield and four or five years later he's in the lineup. So, uh, amazing talent. And our friend Sylvia Wilkinson, who's written a lot of great books through the years. My favorite, The Stainless Steel Carrot, about John Morton's adventures. Uh, she got together and spent the last three years with John Paul putting his story together. And the, the thing that makes the story so compelling is, is a few years ago he got Hutchinson's disease and it's just this debilitating thing that it's, you can't walk, it's hard to talk and his brain is still functioning fine but all the motor skills and everything and it's just so tragic because uh, it's so expensive to keep it going. He needs 24-7 care. And so Sylvia came up with the idea along with John Morton, hey, let's do a book on John Paul Jr. and give all the proceeds to him to help him with his expenses. So believe me, for $40, this is the story of one of the great unsung drivers that probably a lot of people might not really be familiar with, but if you were around in the 80s, you know who this guy was and who he was going to be. So uh, what you can do is johnmortonracing.net is how you buy this book. And it's $40, and all the proceeds go to John Paul Jr., and he needs help. And, again, it's johnmortonracing.net. That's how you get it. $40. Hell of a Christmas present. All right. Now, a couple of guys named Randall Cannon and Michael Gary decided to go do a little sleuthing. So they decided to look into the Stardust International Raceway in Vegas. And the name of the book is... Motorsports Meets the Mob, 1965-71, to 71, and it's this fascinating look at how racing started in Las Vegas and how the mob got involved, and yeah, all our heroes, Mario, Parnelli, Gurney, everybody ran the Stardust Grand Prix, they ran Can-Am cars there, they ran Indy cars there. It didn't last long, but it's an interesting look at how <laughs> organized crime could have someday been involved with the Indianapolis 500 if things work out. Who knows? I mean, we always heard the stories about Mike Boyle and, and his associations up in Chicago. But this is the, this is really interesting because of the people that are named and all the depositions and all the facts and all the quotes they got from people. So how you can get this is you go to McFarlandBooks.com. McFarlandBooks.com. M-C-F-A-R-L-A-N-D books.com. Let me make sure I got that right. You know, I'm not real smart either. Yep, McFarlandBooks.com. That's how you can get this book called Motorsports Meets the Mob, Stardust and Rash Race. Uncle Bobby won a race there, said, but he wasn't on the tape with the he he wasn't he wasn't with the underworld. He had his own posse and his own mafia. Alright. Last but not least, what about Racer? Hey, what a great stocking stuffer. 
40 bucks you can get a subscription to a year. Some of the best feature writers we got in, in the game about sports cars, Indy cars, Formula One, you name it, we got it. Stock cars, we got all kinds of stuff. It's only it's the last really great magazine in the United States about racing. So let's keep it going. Uh, Marshall Pruitt and I have to eat. Um, anyway, appreciate all you guys uh, pulling for me the last few months. Things are looking good, as you can tell. My hair is going to start growing back any day now. And I thank Marshall Pruitt for all the hard work he did in my absence and, and taking up the slack and raising money for me and all the things he's done. I'm going to get him a nice Christmas present if I can just figure out what he doesn't have. Anyway, thanks for reading Racer. Thanks for reading Racer.com. And please, jump in there and get some of these books, but try and give John Paul Jr. some, some love because he needs it and he deserves it. This is Robin Miller. Thanks for watching.